a lot of us are taking the <laughs> taking the sauce. You know what I mean? So it's like it just makes sense. <laughs> now, speaking of sauce. Coach Greg, and I'm here with Dr. Sonny Andrews, of all people. You did, I bet you didn't think we'd have her on the channel. And we're going to be talking about all things you want to know about. We're going to be talking about steroids, about being natural versus not. We're going to be talking about women's wellness, the future of the sport. And so I'm really happy that she's going to be on here, open, honest, and transparent. And so how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for asking and thank you for having me on. <laughs> and in case you didn't know, she is a two-time Olympia competitor. She's been on the Miss Olympia stage and she's recently just placed fourth in the wellness category. And so she's an expert on women's wellness about what's going on. And so we're here to learn as much as we can from talking to her. I guess let's start by by saying this. Okay. Women's wellness, when they first brought it into the into the limelight, they first introduced it. My thought was wow, it's going to be this category for you can carry a bit more body fat. It's wellness. So it's about being healthy. And it's for like bikini <laughs> girls that are, you know, they're not as lean, but they're more curvy and they're still hot. And it's going to be this great category. What was your thoughts on it? I saw the Brazilian wellness and what it was coming, how people were coming in very full. It did look healthy. It looked like they were eating a lot of fruit. You know, <laughs> it looked like they were eating carbs. It didn't look like they were emaciated. So I was really excited for the for the division. And um, as time has told, it's not necessarily a higher body fat than bikini. And in fact, I think it's actually um, a little bit less that there's some girls that come in with cross variations and everything. And they have said that they don't want that. But um, the conditioning has been all over the place with wellness the last three years. They're really trying to to figure out what they want. But obviously, we have the uh, top two is what everyone is going to try and look like now. <laughs> and so when I first got a body, I remember I'm 48 years old. I've been doing this forever. They used to have women's bodybuilding. The girls used to look like bikini competitors. They had that much muscle. And then over the years, girls kept getting bigger and more muscled up. And eventually said, it's gone too far. Let's create a new division. We'll call it figure. And then the girls came in and they're smaller. And it's like, oh, this is great for the average woman who works out, who wants to look good and still be fit. Then yeah. a couple of years go by, figure girls, they look like bodybuilders again. And they had a new division. Let's call it bikini. And then mm -hmm. the bikini girls keep getting bigger. And then they had a new division, wellness. It seems like every single time they add in a new category, somehow they keep rewarding the bigger and leaner girls. And I do believe that's what we're seeing in women's wellness right now. Absolutely. And that has, that was the trend that was happening. And then Tyler announced the video prior to the Olympia and said, hey, we don't want this massive wellness physique on stage. That's not what we're going to reward. And they didn't. I mean, they didn't with the top two. There was definitely some girls in the top 10 that if they posed in women's bodybuilding poses, they would, you know, they would be in, in the top of the women's bodybuilding. They have a lot of muscle. Um and, you know, I think as, as we're talking, I think that a solution to this, this bigger is better craze is why don't women divisions have weight caps? It doesn't really make like, why would we be any different if they're going to try and, um, you know, stop everyone from just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, they're going to need to put a height and a weight cap, you know, for, for women as well. It's, we're doing the same thing, you know? I think that's a great point because time has told us that the judges can't just get it right. If it was all down to the judges, they'd simply reward the best and the women's bikini would be softer. Wellness wouldn't have gotten so big and strided, but it's not happening. And yeah. in the men's division, we have the 212 division. We have classic physique, which is height and weight. And so why are there no categories for women? Why are there weight restrictions on men and not on women. I think yeah. that's a great idea. I think if you put on weight restrictions, it automatically is going to force people to only get to a certain size. I mean, every single category in my mind, they're all freaky. Like you look at a women's yeah. bodybuilder uh, figure, um, even bikini, if you get a really large and lean bikini girl, especially at the amateur level, she could win a bodybuilding show. And so yeah. I think it's time to do something. And I think a height and weight restriction to keep the physiques a bit smaller would absolutely make sense. It worked for guys. It should, I mean, we're, we're, we're bodybuilders. We're doing, we're lifting the weight, eating the food. And a lot of us are taking the, <laughs> taking the sauce, you know what I mean? So it's like, it just makes sense. <laughs> now, speaking of sauce, women's <laughs> wellness, 
I mean, I don't know if anyone thinks these girls are natural. They think women's bikini are natural, wellness are natural. If it was all natural, if they drug tested everyone, there'd be no problems because it would be so difficult to get that much muscle that people just wouldn't get that. But we know that it's not drug tested. Women can take what you want. So what are some of the common drugs performance enhancing, um, not just anabolics, but everything that a women's, because it's wellness, what would women's wellness competitors typically take at the elite level? At the elite level. So I've seen even people who are trying to win their pro cards um, be on a whole long list of things. But in terms of speaking of women that are at the Olympia and their protocols, I've seen quite a few. I have been one of them. Um, I know I mean, this is not going to be any surprise to anyone that Primo is usually one of the the most popular drugs that is taken. And for those that don't know, that's usually an injectable. It can be taken orally, but that's very rare. It's very hard to find. That's when it's real. I've done both. So I know all about it. I've done both. Yeah. So Primo Primo is very popular, obviously. Anivar, um, Winstrol, people are taking Masteron, um, also... There's been some people that I have seen lately on their protocols that are actually taking Tren. Um, that would be the more anabolic side. And then also people are taking antiestrogens like Arimidex or Novadex, and these are usually cancer drugs. Um, also Clen, people are taking that. And these are, I mean, those aren't really anything that's surprising. Would uh, women even be taking like DNP? Would they be going as far as doing that? I'm sure there's some that have. I don't know any personally. Um, I've seen some, I mean, I've seen some protocols where people are taking just test, just straight testosterone, um, not the, like not hormone replacement doses. Um, <laughs> the list of things. I know there's some people that take T3. SARMs perhaps? Are people into oh, SARMs? Is that I mean, Austrian, LGD, RAD 140, all the different types of SARMs? I'm, I'm sure there's a whole long list of SARMs. I um I don't dabble in SARMs. I don't take SARMs. I don't tell any of my clients to take SARMs. I don't know enough about I, I like don't know enough about them to um to really speak on them. Okay. And so anyone that's out there that's thinking, oh, you know, it's women's well, like look at how hot these girls, like they're gorgeous girls. There's no way they're on steroids because look at them. And I'm <laughs> thinking you can absolutely take and abuse performance enhancing drugs and not get all those outward signs just because you're not shaving doesn't believe you're that you're natural. And oftentimes I'm asked, do natty or not on this person? I'm like, you actually think that girl's natural and people, they just don't believe it. But what you're saying, like at the top level at the Miss Olympia, what percentage of wellness competitors do you think are natural? Well, I could say three years ago in the top 10, there may have been 1%. Um, but I, I think that last three years ago, when the division was brought to the U.S., the physique that was the physiques that were rewarded were a lot more attainable. And the people that were genetic freaks, the people that had been training for 10, 15, um, 10, 15 years. I mean, even there's people that were like 40 at the first Olympia. They had been training since they were 20. That's 20 years of building muscle. I mean, for me to say that they're natural would be hard if they were in the industry that long. But I do think that it would be more likely if someone was training for 20 years to build the amount of muscle that they had and they needed three years ago. Now, the standards, I think that I would say that probably would be impossible. Yes. And so basically, if you're natural at the Olympia, even if you're on the bottom end, it's very, very rare. Not saying that no one out there could do it, but most people certainly are taking something. And what about, let's go as far as bikini. This I'm going to consider, that's the smallest. Would you say most bikini level girls at the, at the Olympia are are not natural? I'm not, I don't coach bikini and I can't speak on that. I can only speculate. And I've heard rumors where that some of the bikini athletes are just taking HGH and Clen, and it's like a very small protocol. Um, And then I've also heard rumors. So rumors don't, you know what, it's all hearsay. I don't know. Um, that there's bikini girls who are literally taking trend. So it's all over the place. It's, you know, I, I honestly have no idea. These are just yeah. things that I've heard. <laughs> I mean, I've coached several of these, these girls and, and guys, yeah. and it's rare that I ever see anyone that can get to that level natural. Um, even yeah. if you could do it natural, you probably wouldn't want to, because you could probably take something that give you a slight edge. Maybe it's not uh, an anabolic, but maybe it's something to help you dry out a bit more to get yeah. a bit leaner, uh, an anti-estrogen or, or, mm-hmm. or something that just makes you like appear a dr- like a diuretic, like a- something that's not natural. 
Yeah. Oh, I forgot about diuretics. Yeah, people take those too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> those are those are used as well. 